good late afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Sage. You're watching Kalkine TV live from Sydney and this is the last show of the day, the last trade. There's no better way to wind down the day than with today's market close commentary. So let's dive straight in. The Australian shares ended lower for the second consecutive session on Tuesday as rising COVID-19 cases sparked fears of slowing economic growth. Adding to it, mixed corporate earnings and muted global queues also spurred a risk off sentiment in the market, prompting investors to move towards defensive stocks. Shares of real estate investment trusts Dexas and Charter Hall, energy firm Santos, financial company Magellan, shopping centres Australasia, SG Fleet and Sims, as well as kitchen appliance maker Breville ended lower after reporting earnings numbers. The ASX 200 dropped 0.94%, which was led by a sell-off in the blue chip banks, energy and mining stocks. And during the day's trade, the index fell as much as 1.2% to slip below the psychological mark of 7,500. Among the individual stocks, investment management firm Magellan Financial Group declined the most, falling 9.5%. And some of the other worst performers were Breville Group, Mining firm Linus, rare earths miner Pilbara Minerals and oil producer Beach Energy. Meanwhile, general insurance broker Steadfast Group topped the gainers list by rising 4.7%. Some of the other notable gainers were the healthcare firm Fisher & Paykel, healthcare property firm Domain Holdings, Treasury Wine Estates and the new and used car seller carsales.com. Next up, let's see how the sectoral indices perform today. In the equity market witnessed a broad-based sell-off as eight of 11 sectoral indices ended in the red zone. The financial sector fell the most and settled with 1.7% loss, followed by energy which dropped 1.35%. Among others, material and utilities sectors also ended nearly 1% lower. Bucking the trend, however, the healthcare sector emerged as the biggest gainer by rising 0.4%. It was followed by the industrials and the consumer staples index, which ended marginally higher as well. In the banking space, all the big four lenders, Westpac, ANZ Bank, NAB and Commonwealth Bank ended lower. In the energy sector, the index heavyweights Woodside Petroleum, Beach Energy and Oil Search and Santos declined, owing to a fall in the crude price. And the crude oil prices dropped amid uncertainty over demands due to spikes in the COVID-19 cases. In the material space, the index heavyweights BHP, Rio Tinto, Fortescue Metals and Pilbara Minerals closed in the red. The fall in the mining stocks was attributed to the drop in the iron ore prices. And now before we look at the shares that are in the news today, it's time for a short break. Property by Kalkine. Looking for a dream home? Well, that may sound easy, but it isn't. And from looking for a property that is the right fit for you in terms of cost and other factors, to zeroing down on the right mortgage plan, there are various aspects to consider. And for the latest slowdown in the property market, tune in on Kalkine TV with me, Sage. I will give the latest updates on the property market as well as real estate stocks to help you make the right decision. Keep watching Property with Kalkine. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. This is Sage. You're watching Calcine TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade. In the segment, we'll shift our focus towards the stocks that created a buzz today. And shares of BHP Group dropped over 1% ahead of its June quarter earnings. On Monday, the share price of Minor Giant had risen over 1% on reports to sell its petroleum business to Woodside Petroleum. And the acquisition would boost Woodside's position in Australia's oil and gas sector at a time when it faces competition from the proposed merger between Santos and Oil Search. Similarly, shares of infant formula company A2 Milk slipped nearly 4% after the record rally in the previous session on the takeover buzz. The stock rallied over 12% in the previous session amid reports that global food giant Nestle is eyeing to acquire the specialty dairy firm. Again on the losing side, shares of Beach Energy extended falls for the second day, falling over 5% in line with the energy sub-index. 
On Monday, the shares of the oil producer dropped 9% in the intraday trade after the oil producer reported a fall in revenue and profits for the financial year 2021. The full year net profit dropped 37% while revenue fell 10%, down to 1.56 billion Australian dollars. Moving on to the stocks that's on the positive side now. Shares of electronics retailer JB Hi-Fi continued gaining streaks for the second day after reporting robust earnings. And for the financial year ended June 30th, 2021, the net profit rose 67.4%, while total sales were up 12.6%. The company's broad sorry, board also declared a final dividend of 107 cents per share, fully franked. However, shares of Auckland International Airport fell nearly 1% despite a rise in the passenger traffic and the airlines reported a significant rise in the passenger volumes, up 197% in June 2021 as compared to last year's corresponding period. International passengers excluding transits were up 468% and domestic passengers were up by 171% while the transit passengers were down 71%. The next pick is from the shares of Australia's biggest gas supplier, Santos, dropped nearly 2%, down to $6.09 Australian despite reporting robust earnings. The company reported a profit of $354 million US dollars during the first half, compared to a loss of $289 million US dollars a year ago. And revenue rose 22%. The company also declared an interim dividend of 5.5 cents US per share, 162% higher than two. 2.1 cents US announced a year ago. And Santos said that the earnings were driven by higher realised oil and gas prices and increased sales volumes. Let's move on now. Shares of Westpac Banking Corporation declined as much as 1.8% to hit an intraday low of $25.33 Australian after the lender issued a business update for the June quarter. For the third quarter ended June, the bank reported the CET1, that is Common Equity Tier 1 ratio of 12%, down from 12.3% in March 2021. The bank pointed to dividend payments and higher risk weighted assets, which are up $8.5 billion. Australian dollars to 2% from March quarter, driving the fall in its CET1 ratio. Common equity tier one is the core measure of the bank's financial strength from a regulator's point of view. And Australia's second largest bank also indicated a return of capital to shareholders following buybacks and dividend announcements by its big four competitors. But now before we take a look at more of the companies that are in the news today, it's time for another short break. Welcome back. This is Sage. You're watching Calcine TV live from Sydney. And this is the last show of the day, the last trade. So another company that's on the losing side, the shares of Breville Group tumbled 8.8% down to $30.40 Australian after the company released an earnings report for the financial year 2021. The global kitchen appliance maker reported a 42.3% growth in full year net profit, which was boosted by the strong demand for coffee makers and mixers from people spending more time at home. Revenue surged over the 1 billion Australian dollar mark for the first time, jumping 24.7%. Despite strong earnings, the company cut its final dividend for the financial year 2021 by 35.4% to 26.5 cents per share, compared to 41 cents declared in the last fiscal. Shares of Charter Hall Retail, REIT, dropped 4.2%, down to $3.65 Australian post its earnings numbers. Australia's leading property group reported robust growth in its profit, but it has lowered its distribution for the financial year 2021. Statutory profit increased to $291.2 million Australian dollars, while operating earnings rose by 9.5%. The trust reported distribution of 23.4 cents per unit, down 4.6% compared to the last fiscal. 
And the last but not the least, the share price of Mond Monodelphus gained over 2% to $11.35 Australian after the company secured new contracts. And the engineering company has bagged new construction and maintenance contracts in the resources and energy sectors valued at around $200 million Australian dollars. Monodelphus' fabrication business, Sinostruct, has won a new four-year agreement to supply well site equipment to Origin Energy. Besides, the company has been awarded a new three-year contract with Queensland Alumina to continue providing general mechanical maintenance services at its operations in Gladstone. It has also secured a 10-month extension to its existing contract with BHP, Mitsubishi Alliance, for the provision of drag line shutdowns and maintenance services to its operations in the Bowen Basin. And now in our final segment, we'll take a look east towards the Asian market performance. And the Asian markets extended falls for the second day on Tuesday amid turmoils in Afghanistan. While lower than expected business activity in July raised concerns about China's economic outlook. The persistent concerns over the rising Delta variant in the region also left investors jittery. And the data showed that retail sales, industrial production and urban investment in China all missed forecasts indicating the impact of the fast spreading Delta variant of the coronavirus. Barring Japan's Nikkei, all regional markets were trading lower while South Korea's Kospi declined the most. The Korean stock exchange composite Kospi dropped 0.85%, followed by Jakarta's stock exchange in Indonesia, which fell 0.8%. Hong Kong's Hang Seng tumbled 0.6%, while China's Shanghai composite declined 0.5%. In a similar trend, Straits Times in Singapore was down 0.6%, while Taiwan's weighted stock index slipped 0.5%. Bucking the trend, Japan's Nikkei rose 0.1%, while India's BSE Sensex traded flat in the opening deals. And though we have covered it in all the shows today, here's a recap on the US market's performance. Property by Kalkine. Looking for a dream home? Well, that may sound easy, but it isn't. And from looking for a property that is the right fit for you in terms of cost and other factors, to zeroing down on the right mortgage plan, there are various aspects to consider. And for the latest slowdown in the property market, tune in on Kalkine TV with me, Sage. I will give the latest updates on the property market as well as real estate stocks to help you make the right decision. Keep watching Property with Kalkine. Welcome back, this is Sage and you're watching the last show of the day, the last trade on Kalkine TV. We're just about to recap on the US market's performance. And Wall Street ended higher in the overnight trade despite concerns about China's economy. The Dow Jones gained 0.3% and the S&P 500 added 0.25%. However, the Nasdaq Composite fell 0.2%. And in this last segment of the show, we'll have a quick look over the crypto market's performance. And the cryptocurrencies were trading lower during the Asian trading hour on Tuesday with major coins such as Bitcoin, Ether and XRP flashing in the red. Investors seem to have taken a pause after recent rises in the crypto prices. And the market analysts expect corrections in prices as buyers appear to be exhausted ahead of the 50,000 US dollar resistance level. Bitcoin, the world's largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization, was down 2% at around $46,400 US in the past 24 hours and the most popular currency traded flat, moving in a narrow range. Ether, the world's second largest crypto, fell nearly 3% to trade around the 3200 US dollar mark and the coin has witnessed strong rallies last week after the Ethereum blockchain network updated its software called as the London Hard Fork. And in a similar trend, other digital currencies such as Dogecoin, XRP, Cardano, Stellar, Uniswap and Litecoin were also trading lower. In a fresh development, global retail giant Walmart Inc. is looking to hire a cryptocurrency expert to develop a blockchain strategy. 
The e-retailer is expected to join the league of big players such as Microsoft, AMC, PayPal and Tesla, which are exploring the viability of digital currencies such as Bitcoin. And well, that's all for now in the last trade. But with our existing operations in Australia, New Zealand, UK and Canada, Kalkai Media has launched its operations in the US markets and every day in our first show, the Global Market Roundup, you can get the latest and the important news of the US, Europe and the Asia Pacific markets. So on that note, I'll see you as close as possible to 10am tomorrow live from Sydney. Sage signing off.